Jason Judson. Almost needless to say, we are thrilled to have so many people here. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to see this place full of happy faces and good times. So welcome so very much to all of you, and, and we're so glad you're here. It is, uh, it is my understanding that this is the way this works. Uh, I, it is that the person that nobody knows introduces the people that everybody knows, which seems a little strange, but that's where we are. <laughs> so I introduce to you John Sobald, whom everybody knows, and Bob Perry, whom everybody knows, and that's very good. So, uh, gentlemen, Well, when Grandma Catherine was 83 years old, she was out in the garden in the fall of the year. It was cold and rainy. Shouldn't have been out there. She was a stubborn woman. And she caught a cold. She got pneumonia. Now, they didn't call doctors very much back then because they had to come so far. But when she lost consciousness, they finally called the doctor. And the doctor came. He took one look at her, got the syringe out of her, and gave her a shot in the arm. And she started to come to and she was angry. She said, oh, I was almost in heaven. I could see across the river. I could hear the angels sing. And the devil came along with his pitchfork and poked me in the arm. <laughs> Tonight's program is sponsored in part by the John E. Sumwall and Rod C. Perry Stories Are Us Foundation, a Richland County institution for over 32 minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> right now you're probably asking yourself, how did they arrive at such a clever name for their foundation? Well, if you are wondering that, you really need to get out more. <laughs> and there are a lot of Frank Brown stories. I expect some of you have some to tell also. But the one I remember the best from Lawrence Gas Station was the time that Frank went over to Equity at Bristol Center. And he was coming back, and it was about lunchtime, and he was eating his lunch in the truck. And uh, uh, this was about the time they passed laws about littering, that you couldn't litter. Uh, so he finished his lunch, he grabbed up his papers, he backed in his paper bag, threw it out the truck window, looked in the rearview mirror, and there's a state trooper right behind him. <laughs> Frank took off his hat, threw it out the window, stopped the truck, Got out, went back, gathered up the hat, all the papers in the bag, got back in the truck, and I was there. <laughs> that was Frank Brown. <laughs> I couldn't tell that on radio. I thought, Brown would have fainted if I could. You can tell him I said that. So. <laughs> Last summer, we took a great vacation. <laughs> We went up to the North Country. We have some friends up there. And there's a special spot up there that is untouched by time. Almost as if the Indians still live there. And there's a lake up there, and people come from miles around to visit this lake and drink in its beauty. Now, being North Country, the lake is half frozen all the time. And this lake has a very unusual legend about it. Up there, the old Indians will tell you the legend of the lake. Legend was related to me by a very, very old Indian chief. He said, many moons ago, when the lake was very young, and before the white man came to inflict his logic and civilization on the red man, the only people who lived here were Indians. And the legend has it that a young Indian brave was in love with a young Indian maiden who lived on the other side of the lake. Now, the Indian lovers never met. They never even saw each other because the lake was so vast. But every evening when the moon was bright, the young Indian brave would go to the edge of the lake and he would chant Indian love calls to the young Indian maiden on the other side of the lake. And she in turn would chant Indian love calls back to him. This went on for many years. And then one day the Indian brave could contain himself no longer. He had to be his love. And so he jumped into the icy waters of the lake and began to swim toward his beloved. He swam about 10 feet out, froze, and drowned. To this very day, the legend notes, 
The lake still bears the name of that young Indian brave. Lake Stupid. Uh, here's another one you might 